My adventures at E3 2016 were made possible by NVIDIA Australia and New Zealand. Hello again, I am Blunty at the Pico booth, which I've never heard of these guys before, but they are apparently yet another brand riding the huge wave of VR at the moment. So I'm going to pop in the booth and find out what the score is, because I've got some hooked up to a PC down here, I've got some other ones over there which are apparently a complete standalone unit, complete with their own custom controller come along with it, all colour match and everything, so it looks stylish, I guess. But anyway, I'm going to stop off on you guys, I'm going to dive into the booth here, talk to someone and find out what the Pico VR experience is all about. So here's the thing, what I thought were two similar units, one as a presumably Android based standalone device and one as a PC based headset, are in fact one and the same, which is a bit clever really. On the one hand, you've got a go anywhere all in one VR headset, needs no wires, needs no PC, no need to even snap in your phone, it's completely self sufficient and standalone. It has dual 3.81 inch 1200 by 1080 displays, which if you're doing the math matches the resolution of the HTC Vive. The lenses are optical grade glass, not plastic, a reasonable 102 degree field of view and adjustable focus and interpupillary distance. Pupillary? I always have trouble with that word. The distance between your eyes. And the screens have a refresh rate of a nice, smooth and VR ideal 90 hertz. So, on paper, it's actually ticking all the important boxes so far already. And when in standalone mode, it utilizes Android 6.0, running on the new and nippy Snapdragon 820 CPU. The same CPU you find in flagship devices like the Samsung Galaxy S7, the HTC 10, the Sony Xperia X Performance, and the LG G5. So it should have plenty of grunt for a very nice Android VR experience. Backing that up is 4 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM, 32 gigabytes of built-in storage, and it will support expansion storage with micro SD cards up to 128 gigabytes. And the clever bit is, all of this hardware and the quick charging 5000 mAh battery, which should provide up to 3 hours of gaming, is all in the controller unit. So that means they can keep the actual headset, the bit your head and face has to hold up, surprisingly light. In fact, it's just 320 grams or so without the straps. The controller with all the brains in it making up another 220 grams. And of course, that also means all the big heat generating components aren't on your face either. Aside from all that, they will also have a cable to turn the Pico Neo headset into a PC-based VR headset, and they're listing it as compatible with games from Steam VR, so yay. The headset also has a built-in microphone and a standard audio jack, of course, and USB Type-C jacks. The controller has haptic feedback vibration, and of course, the Android Brain also has 802.11ac Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.1. So that's the basic hardware rundown. Now, as for the actual experience of using it, well, you're seeing me here playing a game in the PC mode. The game I'm actually playing is an on-rails shooter based on Terminator. I've no idea if it's some kind of officially licensed game. I've certainly never come across it before, but it did remind me quite a lot of the old Terminator 2 arcade cabinet shooter, which is a good thing, because that game was fun. The game itself was quite basic, my reticle was simply tied to the centre of my point of view and I just sort of pointed my face at the emotionless robots I wanted to die and explode when I pressed the fire button on the controller. And after a wave or two was defeated, I also walked to the next location. But the game itself really isn't the important part here. The important takeaways here are function and comfort. Now, for comfort, I certainly noticed the lighter than expected weight and it did sit quite comfortably on my face. It felt well balanced and the breathable foam padding was quite comfortable. The lens adjustments are well positioned and easy to set and there was no apparent drifting. The screens were bright and clear and I'd go as far to say as the lens quality was superior to the Oculus Rift. For example, there was no blooming or god raying like there is with the Rift, though as with almost every VR headset out there, there was a little blurring at the edges. There was some slight screen door effect, but it wasn't really apparent unless you went looking for it. The field of view felt slightly narrower than the HTC Vive feels, and indeed on paper it is narrower. 102 degrees versus 110. But that's not to say it felt excessively closed down or claustrophobic, but the majority of my VR experience so far have been in the HTC Vive, so that's just what I'm most familiar with. All in all, I'd call the visual clarity perfectly acceptable, and again, I'd even call it superior to the Oculus Rift in that regard. 
The all-important tracking was issue-free too. The latency felt very small, it was highly responsive and quite smooth, there was no obvious stuttering or lag or anything of that kind. The headset features a good gyroscope, accelerometer and magnetometer combo, and in fact the gamepad also has its own gyroscope and accelerometer sensors for some motion controller action if called upon. But what this headset lacks in tracking when compared to the HTC Vive and Oculus Rift is positional tracking. While both the Vive and the Rift use a camera to track the position of your head, the Pico Neo can only sense the movement of your head via the gyroscope and accelerometer. So while it tracks which way you're looking very, very well indeed, moving your whole head side to side, laterally for example, isn't tracked like it is on the HTC Vive and Rift do it. However, the Pico folk are also making a tracking kit station, which does feature cameras and two motion controller wands, seemingly heavily inspired by the PlayStation Move controllers. It includes the two wand-style controllers, two tracking cameras, one attachable tracking beacon. That beacon, presumably, attaches to the headset to enable full positional head tracking, just like the Rift. But specific details are a bit thin on the ground on their website, and as this hardware wasn't on display or demo at E3, I can't really say much more about it. But what I can say to wrap all this up is that I was quite impressed with the Pico Neo VR headset. More impressed than I'd anticipated, in fact. It really does feel like a very thoroughly thought out and well constructed bit of kit, not the oh hey me too kind of device I had expected from it at first glance. It feels like a quality device, it feels well built, it has wise component choices including good screens, good lenses, good sensors and of course that zippy new Snapdragon 820 CPU. I even like the very sleek and clean looking design. The Pico Neo is set to launch late this year for 3,399 Chinese Yuan, or somewhere around 520 US dollars, which considering the dual function nature of this beast, standalone and PC, it seems like damn good value actually. I'll certainly be keeping an eye on it. So there you go, yet more options for your VR enjoyment. You can never have too many choices in VR as far as I'm concerned. The more of these companies that are doing things, the more variety I've got, the more choice we've got, the more innovation, the more competition. It's all good things for VR. With everybody investing their time, effort and money into these things, it, 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 it's going to help VR become a thing that sticks around and is real. But anyway, that is it for me at the PK booth. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty. We'll catch you next time. Lots more E3 stuff coming at yeah.